purpose of this video is to give ten quick ways that the Book of Mormon directly contradicts the Bible. Mormons would like you to believe that the Book of Mormon is hand in hand with the Bible and in total agreement, and some Mormons have even posted videos claiming that the Book of Mormon and the Bible go hand in hand and there's no contradiction. I'm going to show you in just a few minutes here at least ten places where the Book of Mormon is in direct contradiction to the Bible. 1 Nephi chapter 19 verse 10 speaks of three days of darkness that should be a sign of Jesus' death. Helaman 14 verse 27 says this darkness would cover the face of the whole earth. Helaman chapter 14 verse 20 says, quote, But behold, as I said unto you concerning another sign, a sign of his death, Behold, in that day that he shall suffer death, the sun shall be darkened and refuse to give his light unto you, and also the moon and the stars, and there shall be no light upon the face of this land, even from the time that he shall suffer death for the space of three days to the time that he shall rise again from the dead." End quote. See also 3 Nephi chapter 8 verse 3 and verse 20 through 23 and 3 Nephi chapter 10 verse 9. The Bible in complete contradiction to this says there were three hours of relative darkness. Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 and 46, Mark chapter 15 verses 33 and 34, and Luke chapter 23 verses 44 through 46. The next contradiction that I'd like to look at in the Book of Mormon is the idea that black skin is a curse, which is in clear contradiction of the Bible. The Bible teaches very clearly that God made all nations of men of one blood and that God is no respecter of persons. The Book of Mormon, on the other hand, seems to indicate that black skin is actually a curse for sin and that people's skins will turn whiter if they're quote-unquote righteous. While the Bible continually indicates that God is no respecter of persons and has made all people of one blood, as can be found in Genesis chapter 3 verse 20, Colossians chapter 3 verses 9 through 11, John chapter 3 verse 16, Acts chapter 10 verse 34, Acts 17 verse 26, etc. The Book of Mormon declares black skin to be a curse and indicates that sinfulness or sinlessness can actually make a person's skin white or black. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 and other verses in the Bible would indicate that every person on this planet should be pitch black if this claim was true. Jacob chapter 3 verse 8 in the Book of Mormon says this, quote, O my brethren, I fear that unless ye shall repent of your sins, that their skins will be whiter than yours when you shall be brought with them before the throne of God. Third Nephi chapter 2 verses 14 through 16 say the following, quote, And it came to pass that those Lamanites who had united with the Nephites were numbered among the Nephites, and their curse was taken from them, and their skin became white like unto the Nephites, and their young men and their daughters became exceedingly fair, and they were numbered among the Nephites, and were called Nephites. And thus ended the thirteenth year." End quote. You can find much more racism in verses like these in the Book of Mormon. 1 Nephi chapter 11 verse 13, 1 Nephi chapter 12 verse 23, 1 Nephi chapter 13 verse 15, 2 Nephi chapter 5 verses 21 through 24, Jacob chapter 3 verse 5, Mormon chapter 5 verse 15, 
Alma chapter 3, verses 6 through 10, and verses 14 through 16. The third contradiction that I'd like to look at in the Book of Mormon versus the Bible is the Book of Mormon teaches that we are saved by grace after all we can do. When the Bible indicates that grace and works are total and complete opposites in Romans chapter 11, verse 6, which says, And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The Book of Mormon, on the other hand, in Moroni chapter 10, verse 32, says, quote, Yea, come unto Christ, and be perfected in him, and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness, and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you. Second Nephi chapter 25 verse 23 says, quote, For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children and also our brethren, to believe in Christ and to be reconciled to God. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do, end quote. The fourth problem that I'd like to look at that's a direct contradiction between the Book of Mormon and the Bible is the Book of Mormon says that Jesus is going to be born in Jerusalem. Of course, it was wrote hundreds of years later after Jesus' birth, I believe originally in about 1830, and they still missed the place of Jesus' birth, which is very clearly and explicitly recorded in the Bible as being Bethlehem. But, nevertheless, Joseph Smith still says that Jesus was going to be born in Jerusalem. We find the following in Alma chapter 7, verse 10, quote, And behold, he shall be born of Mary at Jerusalem, which is the land of our forefathers, she being a virgin, a precious and chosen vessel, who shall be overshadowed and conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, and bring forth a son, yea, even the Son of God, end quote. Not only does this verse contradict the Bible, it also contradicts normal Mormon teachings that teach that Mary was not a virgin at the time that she gave birth, and that she became impregnated by the one that Mormonism calls God the Father who was a literal man who became a, a literal God-man, who had literal sex with Mary to bring about Jesus. Totally different from the Bible and totally contradictory to the Bible. Matthew chapter 2 makes it very clear that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. In fact, if you read this chapter carefully and see what is really going on, had Jesus been born in Jerusalem, Herod, who was the king and in Jerusalem when the wise men were passing through, seeking Jesus, Herod would have most likely taken a quick trip along with the wise men to try to kill Jesus. Since Jesus was born a few miles south of Jerusalem in Bethlehem, Herod sent the wise men on their way and asked them to please immediately report to him the location of him so that he could come and quote-unquote worship him when they found him. Another direct contradiction between the Book of Mormon and the Bible. The Book of Mormon often tries to copy events out of the Bible while making them bigger. And one of the places where Joseph Smith tried to make a story that was even bigger and better than Noah's Ark was a story that's known by Mormons as the Jaredite barge story, where a group of Jaredites supposedly built these small little boats and travel supposedly with their flocks and herds and food for everybody for 344 days, I believe it is, to the Promised Land. All kinds of problems with the story. We're not going to look at them here, though. Um, 
But one thing I do want to look at is the fact that Joseph Smith, in trying to clone Noah's Ark a little bit, or at least copy the story, actually directly relates his story to Noah's Ark, as found in Ether chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, which say this, quote, And it came to pass that when they were buried in the deep, there was no water that could hurt them, their vessels being tight like unto a dish, and also they were tight like unto the ark of Noah. Therefore, when they were encompassed about by many waters, they did cry unto the Lord, and he did bring them forth again upon the top of the waters. And it came to pass that the wind did never cease to blow towards the promised land while they were upon the waters. And thus they were driven forth before the wind. Now, being driven forth before the wind in 344 days, they would have circled the earth three and a third times at 10 miles per hour. That's one real big problem in general with the story. But Ether just said here that these vessels were tight like unto the Ark of Noah. Was Noah's Ark air and water tight at all? No, it wasn't. We find in Genesis chapter 6, verses 15 and 16, the following, quote, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it." End quote. Um, a lot of scholars um, believe that Noah's Ark actually had a window that ran the entire length of the Ark. And I myself believe this is most likely the case as well. Though as a cubit high, a cubit is your elbow to your fingertip. Most study Bibles assume it to be about 18 inches. My cubit is more like 21 inches. But um, another error we find in the Book of Mormon is it talks about windows being dashed in pieces as a reason they're not putting a window in the Jaredite barges, which totally misunderstands what windows were, I believe, clear up until just a few hundred years ago. Um, windows, the best that I know, forever back, up until just a couple hundred years ago, were just a hull, sometimes covered with a piece of board or maybe some leather or something else that could close it in time of wind or rain or whatever, but all a window ever was was just a hull. And Joseph Smith apparently hadn't figured this out, living in 1830 when there was some glass for windows, and I believe most houses probably had glass windows then. He assumed that, you know, you can't have windows in these barges because they'd be broken in pieces. So there's one more huge problem. 